Hey everybody, it's June 27th, 2020. We are at the Lower Narrows in Baraboo, Wisconsin. What you see behind me here is an old quarry. When I was doing my undergraduate at ISU at Illinois State as, as a geologist, this was still an active quarry. You can tell by the trees around here and stuff, everything's really young. 2006 it became a preserve. Now, I've shown you guys videos before at Abelman's Gorge where there were these beautiful ripple marks and that was kind of like where every geologist for the past hundred odd years has gone to see the Baraboo Quartzite turned vertical. Uh, that's on the north limb, but so is this. And if you look behind me here, you'll see this here. Now we know from previous talks that the Baraboo Quartzite on the north limb is essentially turned vertical. Uh, just like at the, just like at Abelman's Gorge, strike is almost east-west here, and dip is to the south slightly at about 85 to 87 degrees, so essentially vertical. But north is behind me. But wait, Steve, there's these big, huge cracks here. How do you know those aren't bedding? Uh, that's fractures. How, how do you know it isn't bedding? Well, it's this. Ripple marks. Ripple marks. Big ripple marks. <laughs> so we know that that was bedding. Now we can't tell by looking at them if these are casts or molds. You know, is, is this the top of a seabed or is that the direction of up and this is just a cast of it? Well, that weighs up. So this would have been the sea floor. That would have been a sea floor. How can we tell? Well, we know now from drilling that Baraboo is a sink farm. But there's not a lot of stress fields exposed here. Van Heis Rock, Abelman's Gorge is better for that. But what we do see here, we see cross bedding. I said this is this is rippled. You can see these ripple marks are huge, and that would have been the sea floor or a river braided river stream right at uh, sea level. All right. So we see here you have cross beds here, planar cross bedding. And it's throughout the rock and it exists in bed sets. So this would have been a seafloor bottom. See this dark line? That would have been a seafloor bottom. This would have been a seafloor bottom. These are the cross beds in between. Okay, so that way would have been the water. That way would have been underground when this was originally deposited like this. Horizontal level. And then through later orogenic event, Became tilted since we're on the north limb, we're nearly vertical, and here it's almost east west. We are going to attempt to get up there at those beautiful ripple marks up there. I hope we can get up there. Let me try to get up there. Okay, so we've come up that way is west. Those ways are essentially bedding. You can see it's not perfectly vertical, there is some, there's some. A little bit of dip and change in dip. Uh, but here, this way's north. What you can see here on this bedding plane is ripples everywhere. They're down here too. Take a closer look at them. And there's the wall with the big ripples. I don't think we're going up there. <laughs> it's too dangerous. I was hoping there was a trail. Kind of, sort of is, not really, but whatever. Not going over there. But there's the really, really good ones. Okay, uh, we're not gonna spend too, too much time here because the quality of the ripple marks here is nowhere near as good as they are where we're not gonna go and where we saw them down below. But there is something you could see here. So this would have been one continuous seabed or riverbed. And I think it's a, this one's a riverbed and I'll tell you why. All right, you can see the ripples are not very pronounced here. We have a lot more fines here. This has a lot of silt and, and clay in it. And you can even see kind of mud crack structures in this, but this is, this is above this bed. So this would have been deposited after this was. But what do we see here? Well, we see these ripple marks. And if you don't remember down below, they look like they were going directly into the ground. Like, so when it was laid flat and deposited, water flow would have been either to the north or to the south. But here, they don't like that. Our axes of our ripples and our troughs trend this way. They don't trend this way. So that tells us current was either this way or this way. And at some point it changed because this is the same riverbed. And here we have ripples more east-west. So 
it would have, water would have come, well, assuming it was traveling south, it would have come this way and then this way and gone there. That's why I think this is a river bed because you don't usually get this kind of turbulence with symmetrical ripple marks on a sea floor. Uh, but behind it are those other ripple marks, which aren't really as well developed. Those would have been deposited before this, which was deposited before that. Okay, because we're going down. Older is this way because our beds have been tilted vertical this way. The, as you can see, the ripple marks here are a lot more continuous over a larger scale, indicating that that might have been the sea bottom, so might have had a minor regression, probably not very much. So that's where we just were right there, always roughly north. There's the really good ripple marks we can't visit. But you look down into the valley, you look into the hills in the distance, what do you see? You see hills and valleys. He said this here is the strike of our north limb. So that way's east for all intents and purposes. <laughs> like I said, strike is not exactly east-west, but it's close. So that's east. And you have more hills here, which is quartzite. And then that down there, that's our south limb. That's where stuff like Devil's Lake and stuff like that is. And that's more gently dipping towards us is where this stuff is dipping down into the earth. Uh, so there are some Cambrian remnant hills here as well. We are in an area that was glaciated. The, we are east of that moraine at Devil's Lake. So the glaciers were here. So there's glacial stuff filling this valley. Oh, you do see some phyllite in between thicker beds here. We'll get up there in a second, but what you see, I mean, phyllite, its parent protolith is mudstone. And this is probably clay, so mud would have been deposited as, as clay. You go up through the bed and it becomes more quartzite, and then it all disappears. It's gone, so this was probably a river. And here, we have some here too, which shows more turbulent water in between, on top of this quartzite bed. This is up, that's younging. And you can see here how thick it is right here. It's a lens and it goes down into the ground and it's cross bedded and it is deformed as well. So this probably was a river bed. So you have your fill right there. See, you have ripple marks there. So, and they go, they trend up and down, like they're going down, so which means water flow is either to the west or east. So this probably was a river. I didn't notice this on the way up. I was too busy trying to, uh, try not to fall, but uh, we have some ripple marks right here, top of the bed. These are cat, what we call cast mold structures. So here's actual ripple mark preserved. Here you see what looks like ripple marks, but it's not the top of the bed, it's the bottom of the bed. So, younging actual ripples this is just rippled because it was deposited on top of ripples okay so quick summary with a little added info what did we learn today well we learned about ripple marks we learned about cross laminations uh, within beds bed sets we learned younging direction which here is towards the center of the syncline because we're in a syncline remember it would have been deposited level and let's do this more accurately this way and became deformed with this wall being nearly vertical that's north so the younger beds are towards the axis of the syncline which is to the south we also saw cast mold structures i showed you some phyllite and why i think some of this is a braided stream environment near shore would have been right by the sea and some of it is seafloor based on ripple marks so we can tell a lot by looking at the rocks. These rocks have no fossils, all right? This, this was deposited as a quartz aronite sandstone, meaning almost all quartz. There is iron in it, that's what gets its purple color, and there is a little bit of more iron here than in other places. You pick up some of the talus, you'll see the big black speckles, that's what it is, it's hematite. And it tends to, you know, there seems to be a lot of hematite along bedding planes and it probably is primary it was deposited wasn't altered the iron was not introduced later we do have banded iron formations in the middle of the syncline that are younger than the baraboo well one anyway but anyway i think that's a decent summary if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and i hope you learned something